Hi, I'm Kevin, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a review of the Blue Eddy 200 watt solar panel. But I'm gonna have one issue, given where I live and the time of year. It's almost Christmas, we're right around the solstice, and I live in a relatively northern latitude. That sun is about 20 degrees off the horizon during midday. The sun comes up about nine o'clock, and by six o'clock at night, it is dark. So the amount of power I'm gonna be able to generate from the sun with this thing during the winter is gonna be limited for me. But for you, there's some good news in this video because you likely live at a lower latitude and during the winter, you likely have a lot more sun than I do. That means that whatever testing I do and, and whatever results I get, you're likely gonna get much better results. So let's give this thing a test. The Blue Eddy solar panel is really quite easy to set up. There's a couple of clips that you have to undo. And then it basically unfolds like a book. In the back, there are some legs that uh, unclip and support the solar panel. And you just keep unfolding until all four of those panels are out and facing the sun. and the wiring is secured in a zippered pouch behind the first panel. Now let's attach the Blue 80 EB70 and see what kind of performance we get. The problem is that my battery was already nearly fully charged, so very quickly the smart technology limits the input and it goes to zero. So I had to come up with another solution. Grab a small heater fan and plug it in and it's going to start to draw over 400 watts. And the input I'm getting from these quickly set up solar panels is between 78 watts and 81 watts. Now remember, where I live at this time of year, the sun is very low on the horizon. So I might be able to get a little more juice out of these panels if I adjust them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a couple of saw horses that I have that are at a steeper angle than the 45 degree kickstand on these solar panels. At my latitude, that's going to make a little more sense. I'm going to prop up the solar panels to a steeper angle. And I'm also going to readjust my panels to make sure they're directly facing the sun. And I'm going to move that fan out of the way because it's shading the panels a little bit. Now let's see what kind of results I get. Look at that, 104 input watts, 108. I maxed out at about 111 watts. I found the Blue 80 200 watt solar panel fairly easy to set up. It has these three kickstand legs for the four panels. Many reviewers have commented they'd prefer to see a fourth leg on, on that other panel, um, but it works pretty well. These legs are basically set to 45 degrees, but you can uh, adjust the angle of your solar panels by loosening this strap and selecting a different snap. Each snap is five degrees of angle. And there's one snap at the bottom of the leg, and that is so that you can secure the leg tightly to the solar panel when you put this away. The solar panel packs up even more easily than it is to install. You just fold up the panels, clip the... Uh, the panels together with these clips on either side and pack away the wiring harness. But here in the dark there's a sliver well, it has really clouded up quickly, um, just a couple hours after I, I shot most of that, and uh, the temperature has dropped. So that's another thing to, to think about. Um, you should not be charging the EB70 in cold temperatures. When I was charging it, it was just for a very short time, and the, the, the unit was very warm. It was in the house. I brought it out for five or ten minutes to, to see how well it charged. And uh, the, the fan inside the EB80 actually engaged to cool off the unit. So um, it was pretty safe, but you're not supposed to be charging 
the uh, the power station in uh, freezing temperatures. That could that could harm the battery. And the solar panel is supposed to function down to minus 10, so it's not going to work for me in all conditions. If I had a power outage and I wanted to charge my power station, I would put my solar panel out on my deck and run the line uh, through the door, closing the door gently on the line not to, not to damage it, keeping the power station warm and the solar panel uh, outside where it can receive the sun. And the weight of the solar panel is another consideration. It weighs just a little more than 16 pounds, so you're not going to be bringing that on a backpacking trip. However, a car camping trip or in a power outage, uh, it's going to be perfect. It's light enough that you can deploy it very quickly. I found those three legs to be adequate, but just adequate. It would have been really nice to have a fourth leg, and it really would have been nice to have something else to, uh, to set the panel up at a steeper angle than 45 degrees, at least for me where I live. 45 degrees, though, is probably going to be good enough for most people. Now, if you search through some of the reviews on this, you're going to find that a number of people have complained about the handle being flimsy. I find it feels pretty firm and strong. It is plastic, so it certainly can break. It's put together and held together with uh, some screws underneath some filler caps here. And uh, so time will tell. Um, I find it good, but that has not been everyone's experience. The solar cells are made of monocrystalline with a Teflon ETFE coating. They are advertised at 23.4% efficiency, which is just a little bit ahead of the industry average. Now this panel is rated as splash proof, but it is not waterproof. So you don't want to leave it out in the rain. Um, that's a bit of a criticism I have, but there aren't an awful lot of truly waterproof solar panels out on the market. The wiring harness on the solar panel is about eight feet long and it uses these MC4 connectors, which connect directly to the MC4 connectors on this cord here that came with my EB70 and has a barrel connector on the other side. The uh, MC4 connectors clip together very, very easily. And then you plug the barrel port into the EB70. This is pretty great, but if you're gonna use a different brand of power station, you're likely gonna want a, a different adapter um, something that connects into these MC4 connectors. Now this solar panel is pretty simple. It just gives you that one output, that MC4 connector output. Um, some solar panels on the market have USB ports so that you can plug a device directly into the solar panel. That would be pretty cool, but of course that's going to raise the price. So let's talk performance because that's what a lot of folks are most interested in. And quite honestly, when I look at the reviews online, there's a wide uh, array of uh, performance out there. Some people are finding very, very poor performance. Other folks are getting very good performance. I had a partially cloudy sky and very low angle sun. And by adjusting my solar panel, I was able to increase my performance substantially up to about 111 watts, which I think is pretty good considering where I am. This solar panel is rated at 200 watts, but no solar panel on the market is gonna give you full efficiency. You're not gonna hit that 200 watts, no matter what you do. Some of the best recorded efficiencies online I found range between 150 and 160 watts. That's pretty darn good. Uh, but some reviewers have been having a lot of trouble. I don't know if they haven't been adjusting their solar panel to the sun correctly. I don't know if they had uh, very cloudy conditions like I have now. Um, under those conditions, you're not going to get uh, anywhere near the kind of performance that I had. Another relatively minor issue that the power station has is that it caps out at 8 amps. If you feed it more than 8 amps of power, it, uh, it, it gets wasted. Now the solar panel is rated up to 9.7 amps and I've seen some people get more than 10 amps out of their solar panel. So some of that energy is theoretically wasted, but uh, again, you're likely not going to get that full efficiency. Um, it just means that your solar panel is going to uh, take a little bit longer to charge, as I explained in my previous video. Uh, most 200 watt solar panels, uh, including the uh, Blue Eddy's own SP200, those solar panels uh, are producing power at 20 volts and 10 amps to get 200 watts. And so with its own product that's, that's relatively well matched, except for that restriction, you're going to be losing power um, out of the system. So if your solar panel is fully powered at 20 volts and you have an 8 amp restriction, then you're only going to be able to get 160 watts into that battery. 
So some folks who use solar panels to charge their power station are noticing this 8 amp restriction. You might ask yourself, how big a deal is this? Well, I don't think it's a deal breaker. No 200 watt solar panel is gonna give you that full 200 watts. At best, on a really bright sunny day, you're likely gonna get 180 watts out of that solar panel, and that's max. And at 180 watts, you're gonna get a full charge in about four hours. So you're probably not sending a full 10 amps of current to the battery anyways. So under ideal conditions, that uh, restriction might cost you 20 or 30 minutes of extra charge time. So that is my review of the Blue Eddy 200 watt solar panel. This thing performed very, very well, even in these adverse conditions with uh, minimal daylight. Um, I got a lot more power out of this than I expected. And I'm really looking forward to using this at other times of the year when I have a lot more sunlight. This is gonna be just great on camping trips and during power outages, and it's gonna give us a lot of versatility.